Hello! Uh, welcome back to my life on tape. Um, this week, it's March 12th. Uh, it's spring break. Oh, oh, excuse me. Spring break! Woo! Ah, spring break! That's legally required um, as an ASU student that I do that whenever I point out that it's spring break. Spring break! Yeah! Woo! All right. <clears throat> Whenever uh, I refer to the fact that it's spring break, during spring break, it's it's legally required that I do that. Um, I think that was third person, so I should be okay with that last one. Um, but real quick, spring break! Okay. Um, so far, it's been a very uh, boring spring break. Uh, I've stayed at home and done nothing. Played uh, far too much, far too much uh, on Facebook, and not like cool typing up things or making images of stuff. Uh, I've been like playing stupid app games on Mind Jolt, like the the tower defense. God dang, I love that tower game where you know you put up turrets. There's like 50 million of them, but really love the Warzone turret defense game. Far too much time wasted on that. Far too much time wasted on that. Um, did recently have another Earth Dawn session. That was awesome. Uh, I'm very happy to be playing Earth Dawn again. Earth Dawn is great. Um, there's obviously room for improvement, like there always is in all role playing games, but I love the sensation of rolling a bunch of dice. And it's not even a whole ton of dice, just rolling multiple dice all together for a single result feels really good. And rolling different sized dice, the tactile sensation of having, you know, like like a D6 and a D12 and a D4 all in your hand at the same time. It's it's nice. And you roll them, and if any of them hits the top number, you're like, yeah! And then every once in a while you get where it maxes out repeatedly, and you get some ludicrous number that you, ne you have no business getting. You'll roll like a D8 and get like 27. And you go, oh! was so great and you know unlike D&D &D, where you can get you, you can max out and you're like yeah natural 20 unlike D&D &D, if you max out in Earth Dawn um, you get to re-roll and keep going so there's a bit of that gambler's high when you know you're rolling that 1d6 and you're like okay pff, dude I got a 6 oh my gosh I got another 6 and it can keep going and it's like oh the tension gets so high it's awesome um, we're having a lot of fun we're playing in Camelot I'm playing the son of Arthur it's a little weird for me, but I like it. My character's name is Loholt. Loholt, son of Arthur. Bastard son of Arthur, though. Not like, you know. But a prince, nonetheless, of another kingdom altogether. Left left his kingdom go to uh, go oppose a guy for the throne of uh, Camelot. Um, put uh, my character in a very odd position, because my character is a pagan. <clears throat> and... The pagans and the Christians aren't too happy with each other in uh, England uh, around this time. And the guy who my character is opposing for the throne is a... He's sort of aligned himself with a real real gestalt uh, Christian hater person who murders Christians and pagans alike in an attempt to get rid of all the Christians. And while my character has no love for the Christians, he, he's not really so good on the whole-scale slaughter either. It's, uh, it's kind of like douche hats. I might hate douche hats, but... I would much prefer their severe, you know, but then again, douche hatism is much, it's harder to be indoctrinated into it, but I would not be okay with the genocide of all douche hats. That, that I'm not cool with. Or, or anyone close to a douche hat, you know, physically, like proximity of a douche hat doesn't need to die. They need to be re-educated so they can stop being such, such fucking assholes. But, you know, I'm not, I don't want them to all be wiped off the face of the planet. That's, that's wrong. So anyway, that's that's the update on my role playing. I I'm spent all the time on that because it's kind of a big deal um, for me. Uh, the, oh, the other thing I did recently was I saw Watchmen. Please go see this movie. Um, it's weird. It's bizarre. It's disturbing. It's gory. There's nudity. There's uh, a lot of action in it, but it's not about the action. Um, it's a whole lot of movie, and I mean that plot-wise, I mean that time-wise, I mean that significance-wise. Um, Watchmen, one of the uh, greatest graphic novels ever written. For those of you who don't know, a graphic novel is one of these guys. 
Um, it has a lot of really important themes, a lot of uh, really important statements and ideas that get dealt with. It deals with the purpose of morality, the value of morality. Um, it deals with a lot of questions about what it is to be human, what it is to be a god, what it is to have faith, uh, what it is to make decisions, and it puts up a lot of different moral concepts throughout the movie. Um, I wish they had given a little more attention to a few of the other characters. Adrian Veidt, Ozymandias, if I think that's how you pronounce his name, could have been fleshed out a little bit more. Um, but I really like the ending choice they made. I heard Alan Moore, who's one of the, uh, one of the creators of the original, got pretty upset because they changed his ending. Um, his ending worked, but it was kind of ludicrous. Okay, it was really, really ludicrous. And I gotta respect the director, because he kept the emotional content, he kept the theme, and he, most importantly, he kept the impact, as well as the forces that, that, that help it sew the whole story together. He kept all of that while changing the actual events, and to be honest, I think it fits the story better than the original ending did. Now, a lot was cut out. The book had this whole thing about you know, all these non-essential characters who really helped add to the flavor text of the whole thing because uh, the terror and buildup of nuclear arms and the fear that we're going to die at any moment, but you keep living in a world where any moment you could die, but, which really was the 80s during the height of the Cold War when you're like, wow, um, this is going on. Remember the Cuban Missile Crisis? Okay, around that time period, there could be a nuclear war and obliterate the planet any moment, you know, and, or there could not, and you just sort of had to go about life going, well, we could all die, or we could not, moving on. Um, that is brought up, but it's not fleshed out as much as it could have been, but that's okay, the movie's still like, you know, 52 hours long, but it's a good 52 hours. Um, it is really badass. The movie gives the most attention to Rorschach. Rorschach is an allegory for about uh, a million billion things. Um, real quick, for anybody who's not heavily into comics, doesn't already know about uh, the Watchmen and such, please acknowledge that this this story was published by DC Comics. DC Comics is the owner, publisher, and creator of Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, The Flash, all these people. So Night Owl is not a ripoff of Batman. Rorschach is not a ripoff of the question. There are variations on a theme that have certain similarities, but they're not identical. Um, I really like the personality that each character had in the movie. Uh, Lori Jupiter, I mean, that's not her first name. Anyway, Lori, Miss Jupiter, my girlfriend is totally in love with her now. Uh, she's really cool. She's actually one of the few characters who I like more in the movie than in the book. Uh, they gave her a lot more weight, a lot more strength, not just physical strength, but I mean a lot more character in the movie than in the book. It still feels rushed, but the book felt a little bit rushed. The movie is worth seeing, though. It's an awesome movie. You definitely need, definitely need to go see it. Uh, what else have I done lately? Oh, right. I'm um, going to be moving my video blogs over to a new thing soon. It's called uh, Geek Quest. My friend Yorgos is putting it together. Yorgos, if you all remember, is my absolute best friend in the entire world. Uh, he's asking me to limit my uh, vlogs to five minutes. <laughs> That's going to be a little tricky. Um, there's a lot more that happened in my life that I just haven't really been talking about, but, you know, time is short, so to speak. Um, college is great. Ne uh, spring break's over next week. Going to go back. I think I might do a more you know specifically for my... Uh, macroeconomics class, as sad as that is. I love having a teacher who English is her second language because it, it's, it's hilarious what, to have that going on at the same time that you're taking communications courses and interdisciplinary studies course, which is all about thinking outside and finding an alternative way to get to the information you need to get to. Uh, it's fun, let's say that. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I uh, put on a lot of weight lately. Well, not weight, fat. I'm uh, going to have to get rid of that. I did have a haircut recently at my girlfriend's uh, gay barber. Um, not that the barber themselves is gay. It's actually a hair salon. Um, so it was all female haircutters, and they were very nice, They were, but they were hairdressers, so the shop itself. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was kind of a fake a lot. Not that that's bad. It's perfectly fine for haircutting. Oh, and there's my time.